Morning. Thanks for being with us on this foggy Friday morning. I'm Heather Abraham. Today's show is all about traditions, holiday lights, holiday food, holiday music, holiday cheer. It truly is a wonderful time of the year. And our first guest this morning is here to talk about another tradition, holiday movies. This year, holiday movies uh, studios, uh, holiday Hollywood movies <laughs> studios are giving us some great gifts for the holiday. It's a big lineup of movies, so diverse, there's something for everyone. And here with a guide to holiday movies is KDK's resident film critic, Dr. Drew Mignot. Thanks for being here. Hey. I guess you already were here, weren't you? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thanks for coming on the show today to talk about this great lineup. Yeah. First one is a true talker. Everybody's talking about this one. Absolutely. You know, Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi, you know, the, the Star Wars movies are becoming an annual Hollywood holiday tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been releases the last two holiday seasons. This is the much anticipated eighth movie in the series. You know, George Lucas, uh, in the beginning, envisioned three trilogies when he was mapping out the storyline for these movies. And um, uh, he thought of all this before he sold the company uh, for $4 billion to Disney back in 2012. The Last Jedi marks the last appearance of Carrie Fisher as uh, Princess Leia. Mm -hmm. She died, of course, tragically last December 27th, the day before her mother, famous uh, Hollywood mother, uh, Debbie Reynolds, passed away. Right. Um, so, but you have to question, is this really her last appearance because they can digitally recreate characters as we've seen Unbelievable. You know, in these movies. So right. you never know. Uh, this is obviously a guaranteed blockbuster. Um, and uh, for the record, J.J. Abrams, uh, is going to be returning to direct the final ninth installment, which is going to be released in 2019. Um, in the meantime, uh, there's going to be a, a movie called Solo, a Star Wars story in 2018 um, that's going to kind of cover that. It's going to be a backstory about Han Solo. Um, Mark Hamill, of course, is going to be in this movie, The Last Jedi, along with Daisy Ridley. This, by the way, marks the 40th anniversary of the Star Wars franchise, and in wow. that amount of time, it has made 37 million, I'm sorry, 37 billion, billion, I was billion with say, a B, right. billion with a B dollars. Uh, and that doesn't inc uh, include the revenues from this movie. A lot of Star Wars fans excited about that. Okay, let's talk about The Darkest Hour. What is this movie about? Uh, this is set in the early days of World War II. Gary Oldman plays uh, Winston Churchill, uh, who was the newly appointed prime minister of England. And, uh, and uh, Churchill at that time was facing this very tough decision about whether to negotiate with Adolf Hitler or to go to war. Um, Gary Oldman spent some time here, by the way, in Pittsburgh, filming The Dark Knight Rises back in 2012. He was playing the character Commissioner Gordon. You know, he's had such a wide range of challenging roles. He played Sid Vicious early in his career. He played Lee Harvey Oswald in the movie JFK. He's been Dracula. He's been Beethoven. He's played crazy, you know, scary heavies. Yeah. Lots of range and intensity and passion. Uh, some claim an over the top acting style, but it's interesting that we're returning to World War II for story uh, material. Uh, just remember that uh, Christopher Nolan uh, came out with Dunkirk last summer. And by the way, there was another Churchill movie that was released this year starring Brian Cox. Well, I am really excited to talk about this next one, uh, Jumanji, based yeah. on Jumanji. You remember seeing the original? With Robin Williams, right. I came, loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That came out in 1995 mm -hmm. with Robin Williams and uh, Kirsten Dunst uh, about a man trapped in a board game for 26 years. It was a blockbuster hit, as mentioned. It was great. Uh, but now, of course, you know, time has passed. They are uh, now uh, looking to remake this movie. In the new one, it's four teenagers uh, who uh, discover an old video game and are zapped into this jungle setting as <laughs> avatars. Avatars are played by uh, Dwayne Johnson, Jack Black, Kevin Hart. Uh, there's a little gender scrambling that takes place here, which is uh, for comedy effect. Uh, Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart, by the way, are reunited. They were in the movie uh, Central Intelligence back in uh, 2016. This is from director uh, Jake Kasdan, whose father uh, was a famous Hollywood director and writer. His dad did movies like Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Body Heat, The Big Chill, so it's really a movie family. Great lineup, too. It should be a fun movie to see. And Hugh Jackman, another great actor coming up in this movie, The Greatest Showman. Yeah, uh, this is an original uh, movie musical inspired by the imagination of the legendary P.T. Barnum. Uh, this celebrates the uh, birth of show business. Uh, Hugh Jackman, as you mentioned, plays P.T. Barnum. Uh, Co-stars uh, Zendaya, uh, Rebecca Ferguson, Zac Efron, Michelle Williams. This is about a bygone era, you know, a piece of Americana. As you know, the Ringling Brothers, Barnum & Bailey Circus, uh, performed their last shows just this last May. Uh, they were shut down because of uh, the animal rights activists and their concerns. 
Um, for uh, Hugh Jackman, this was a dream project. His last musical was uh, Les Miserables back in uh, 2012. Right, And right. he was dying to do this project. He's at heart a song and dance kind of guy, you know, when he's not playing Wolverine with knife blades poking out of his knuckles. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. This looks like a fun movie to see yes. around this time. Um, Terry Bradshaw, we love him, we yeah. know him, we love him, and he's now in this movie, Father Figure. Yes, uh, this is about two fraternal twin brothers played by Owen Wilson and Ed Helms. Uh, they discovered that their free-spirited mother, uh, Glenn Close, uh, has not been telling them the truth about the identity of their father. So now they're grown uh -huh. up and on a mission to find their dad. This is kind of like the theme of Mamma Mia without the singing and dancing. Uh, among the list of possible fathers that they uh, encounter, uh, actors, uh, or actors uh, Christopher for Walk and J.K. Simmons, and as we mentioned, you know, Terry Bradshaw uh, playing himself, you know, and Terry's had a great career besides being a superstar quarterback. I mean, he's been, you know, doing NFL pro broadcasts, uh, commercials, TV shows, movies uh, like Failure to Launch, and uh, this should be a lot of fun. It should be. And you and I were talking about this next movie, Downsizing. It reminds me the concept of Honey, I Shrank the Kids. Yes, uh, this is from, <laughs> yes, this is from writer-director Alexander Payne, whose movies include Nebraska, The Descendants, uh, Sideways, election. The whole concept of downsizing here is that people are being shrunk down to being just five inches tall and when that happens they consume less, things cost less, so you're, if you're an average person you can live like a millionaire if you're shrunk down to being just you know five inches tall. This uh, co-stars Matt Damon and Kristen Wiig. Uh, one of the best movie trailers I have seen uh, in recent memory, hysterically funny, um, but uh, this movie actually turns out to be a little more thoughtful and serious than what you might expect, but still lots of funny moments. That looks great. And let's talk about The Post, and this is kind of a hard-hitting movie. Absolutely. You know, the White House attacks on media and the free press uh, are nothing new. Back in the 1970s, both the New York Times and the Washington Post dared to publish contents of a top-secret classified uh, 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 series of papers called the Pentagon Papers. Mm -hmm. In doing so, they blew the lid, blew the lid off of uh, false claims from the government that we were slowly winning the war. Uh, the truth was uh, that we were not winning, and uh, this was a dark secret that was investigated in a uncovered by publishers and reporters who are willing to risk everything. I mean, you know, the fate of their newspapers and possibly going to jail. Uh, this co-stars Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep were working together for the first time, directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, who in recent years has been doing a lot of movies about history. Bridge of Spies, right. Lincoln, Munich, Saving Private Ryan, Schindler's List. This is a movie on a par with all the president's men in Spotlight. I'm surprised that Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep have never worked together Isn't before. Interesting. That's, that's surprising to me. Yep. And a lot of buzz, too, about all the money in the world. What is this movie Yeah, about? a drama about the real-life kidnapping of John Paul Getty III and his mother's desperate plea to get his billionaire grandfather played by... Uh, um, uh, Kevin Spacey initially, you know, to uh, to pay the ransom. Uh, the co-stars in this movie, Wa Mark Wahlberg, Michelle Williams. Now we have Christopher Plummer playing that role because uh, when the information came out about, about Kevin, Kevin Spacey, Spacey and the mm. sexual misconduct, director Ridley Scott decided to recast this and reshoot and re-edit. Wow. And this was only within a couple of months of the release date. Uh, so that was very a lot ambitious. Of work going back into that. Absolutely. Ridley Scott, of course, his other movies include Alien, Blade Runner, uh, you know, The Gladiator and uh, Alien Covenant. In it seems in very interesting. Molly's Game, you says, is about a real story. Yes, based on the story of Molly Bloom, an Olympic-class uh, skier who uh, eventually ran the world's most exclusive high-stakes poker game, uh, became the target of the FBI. Her players included Hollywood royalty, sports superstars, business titans, and unknowingly, the Russian mob. Uh, Jessica, uh, Jessica Chastain uh, stars in the, in the title role. Uh, Co-stars uh, Idris Elba and uh, Kevin Costner. This was directed by Aaron Sorkin, who co-wrote screenplays for movies like uh, um, uh, Steve Jobs, Moneyball, The Social Network, and Charlie Wilson's War. Co-wrote the screenplay for this one with none other than the real Molly Bloom. Uh, and this is his directorial debut. Uh, he even has a small cameo in this movie, not unlike what uh, Hitchcock used to do in his films. Well, certainly a fun, exciting time of year for anybody that loves the movies. And there really is something for everyone, as we just went over. Yep. Drew Mignot, our resident KDKA movie reviewer, member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association, and head of our KDKA TV commercial production team. Thank you, and happy holidays. Thank you.